When the Acura ILX was introduced back in 2013, it really pleased a lot of Acura faithful because it marked the return of a Civic-based entry-level car to Acura's U.S. lineup. Now, over the years, American luxury car buyers' tastes have certainly changed, which is why Acura was forced to make some pretty significant changes to the ILX for 2019, complete with the new diamond pentagon face and a pretty substantial $2,000 price cut. So, if you guys are actually looking for an entry-level compact sedan, is the 2019 ILX worth a look? That's what we're here to find out. So two years ago, Acura was on a mission to completely change the face of all of their U.S. vehicles, and the ILX was technically the last of their mainstream models. The NSX, of course, still has uh, the old face, but that's kind of a unique model on its own. Now, for 2019, you can see the ILX is surprisingly still handsome, despite the fact that this is still based on the ninth-generation Civic platform. You guys, if you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I actually bought one of these with a manual back in 2013. So six years on the market, and it's still riding on the same platform. What was Acura kind of thinking? But let's take a look at all the changes. You can see dual eye LED headlights are going to be standard. You actually have LED turn signals. You have this new design to the LED headlights. And then of course that new diamond pentagon grille that actually looks surprisingly handsome. A lot of you have actually told me uh, from Instagram and Facebook that you think this looks better than the current Civic sedan and Civic hatchback. This particular one here is the A-Spec trim. Think of it as kind of like a sport package. It adds the blacked out finish in the grille, the blacked out finish down here, the actual LED fog light. So it is a significant upgrade versus the first refreshed ILX, which is shown back in 2016. I think this looks much more handsome, uh, especially when you compare it to that particular model. The hood has also been increased in terms of the bulges here. It definitely has that new look that they first showed us on the Acura TLX. Now, riding on the old Civic platform, you're going to notice the ILX looks considerably smaller than the old Civic, and that's because it is. Its wheelbase is about an, uh, an inch shorter than the, the new Civic at 105, and they actually increased the length of this model for 2019 at 182 inches long. It's about a half inch shorter than the current Civic sedan. Now, being the A-spec trim, you're going to, of course, see the A-spec badge here, uh, which reminds you a lot of the TLX. You have these unique shark gray 18-inch wheels riding on 225 RC, R18 Michelin tires. It's definitely a nice-looking wheel, much better-looking versus the uh, 2018 model that had a different wheel for the A-spec trim. And then if you look at the rest of the profile, it definitely has that kind of subcompact look to it. It, defin it doesn't look as large uh, as the Civic for sure, and it really looks a lot smaller than Acura's own TLX. This A-spec model has a nice sunroof that's standard, and then the red leather that looks really good with this white pearl exterior color. Now at the rear, again, Acura also made some pretty extensive changes for 2019. You have LED combination, rear taillights, and A-spec badge, this nice little subtle black colored rear lip spoiler. And then that exhaust is literally like a tribute to uh, Civics from the 90s, how it's a single outlet. It's a little bit small. Uh, it does come on the A-spec models. I'm glad Acura has returned to actual exposed exhaust, but I kind of wish they went with a dual exhaust setup. Now, the trunk capacity of the ILX is also a weak point because this is based on the old Civic. You're looking at around 12 cubic feet of cargo space. Um, basically with the seats up. You can fold those down in one piece. This is about three cubic feet less than what you're gonna get in uh, the new Civic sedan. And then underneath here, Acura doesn't actually give you a temporary spare. Instead, you just have a fix a flat kit, which is kind of a downgrade versus the earlier models, since I believe mine actually had a spare tire. So while the outside of the 2019 ILX may look entirely new, let's hop into the interior and see some of the changes that Acura has made for 2019. Now, first off, here is the key fob for the vehicle. Acura's Intelligent Access uh, Smart Entry Key with Push Button Start comes standard. As you can see, this is the current Acura key fob. It's a really heavy, sturdy feeling key. It feels better than what you get in the Honda products, but as you can see, no remote start on the actual key fob. So as you approach the vehicle, like every other car, just keep the key fob in your pocket. Uh, there's a button here on the outside of the door handle. Just touch that button. It'll 
it'll lock the doors. To unlock it, just touch the back of the handle and then that will unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the inside of this uh, A-Spec model, you can see the red leather is the first thing that'll grab your attention. This is a new color option for 2019. You can only get it on certain um, color combinations. This uh, white exterior with the red looks fantastic. The seats, I think, look great. Uh, Acura has updated them. They're still only heated. They don't offer cooled seats. They do offer a 10-way power adjustment now with a two-person memory. I remember my ILX uh, only had like an eight-way power seat with no lumbar so uh, and no memory seat, so Acura's kind of updated that. I also can see lots of red stitching on the steering wheel and the shifter, so that's all very nice. Now, stepping into the interior, you can see it has that still low uh, step in height. Remember, Acura tries to market this as an entry-level sports sedan. And then when you shut the door, you know, it definitely doesn't sound quite as solid as it used to. It's The new Civic on its new platform has a much more solid sounding door, but when you want to uh, start the vehicle up, just put your foot on the brake. As you can see, there's a button here to fire up the engine. And the gauges haven't really changed much in the you know, six years that this car has been on the market. Uh, only one engine is available now, that 2.4 liter direct injection four-cylinder. It's that very nice, typical Honda VTEC engine. It's a four-cylinder, high-revving, naturally aspirated. So if you guys don't want that turbo and CVT in the Civic, this is definitely a good option for you. Now, taking a look at the rest of the interior, you can see Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is now uh, included on this particular one. You have to at least go for the premium package to get this two-screen layout. If you guys go for the base model, uh, which is like $26,000, you will just get that seven-inch uh, display or five-inch display that my uh, 2013 model had without the Apple CarPlay. Now, in terms of the materials, you can see it's the same. It's the same soft touch material on the upper dashboard. It hasn't really changed. They did upgrade this material here, or not really upgrade, just update. It's this silver painted, or I'm sorry, this gray painted plastic with the chrome trim. The door panels are also soft touch, the same thing that's on the dash. You have a silver accented door handle. The window controls, these are one touch up down for just the front windows, not the back. You can see here two person memory, which is nice. It's nice and padded right here uh, with some nice uh, red leather from the seats. This part down here is all hard touch plastic. And then you have a little storage area over there. The steering wheel, you can see this steering wheel is definitely old. This uh, was first introduced on the fourth generation Acura TL, but you can see um, good buttons here. You have the Acura watch, which is standard equipment, just like you get on the Civic, which Honda calls Honda Sensing instead. The steering wheel itself is also manual tilt telescoping with a good amount of adjustability. Again, wasn't expecting too much for Acura's you know, entry-level model. The gauges, as you can see, there's a little seven inch display, or, I'm sorry, it's a three and a half inch display uh, where you can change the different views. Um, this is slightly different than what you got in the original ILX. Um, they added this display in 2016, but as you can see, it's kind of just overdue for a redesign. The infotainment system here, this is the newer uh, display, the, two, the second generation, which Acura introduced on the TLX and MDX. It's when they added the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They basically said this is roughly 30% faster than the system that was in the 2018 ILX. As you can see, this has um, a touch screen right here where it's a six inch dis or seven inch display and then an eight inch display here. It's just very old. And although they added Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you see that portion over there is not a touch screen. You have to use this little rotary knob to actually go through the menus here. It is nice, to, I can say, you know, to have the Waze, to have the Google Maps, because, you know, if you guys want to use the, you know, the Waze integration and whatnot, it does look pretty nice over there, especially when you go to the embedded navigation that this tech package model gives you. I mean, come on, Acura. That is just so old from 2005 was that screen, that, that display first came out on the RL back in 20, 2005. So again, very old. Now the backup camera is also standard equipment, no 360 camera, but you do get, you know, trajectory. You also get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. That's something you don't get on a Civic at any price. So that's another reason why you'd want to get the, the Acura view. As you can see, top down view, wide angle view, normal view. So good three views there. The camera resolution is nothing special, but at least it's standard equipment, which is nice. As you can see here, uh, big buttons here that are nicely labeled. Go to smart, click smartphone there. It'll take you back to, you know, the Apple CarPlay display. Um, navigation basically there. You either have the smartphone information there or you have the factory nav or you can also put the phone information um, or you can go to info and it'll show your trip. This display here pretty much always shows your audio and then your climate control. You can see dual zone climate control is standard equipment. Uh, the knobs haven't changed. They feel really high quality. The buttons feel good. 
and then down here, as you can see, they used to put the USB cable in here on the pre-refresh models. Now, this is just a tiny storage area. You have two level heated seats. This controls the eight speed dual clutch transmission with the torque converter. It does have paddles on the wheel and then it does have a little sport mode here, but no IDS button that you get like in the TLX or MDX. You have a traditional handbrake here, um, which is nice. Two cup holders there. This is a nice padded armrest here, a little bit smaller in the storage compartment here which is what I noticed. You can see the USB has been moved to over there along with a power plug. The seats, I think they're actually relatively comfortable. They're a little bit on the firmer side uh, and I wish Acura offered cooled seats, but I do like the suede with the contrasting stitching and piping. It looks good. The glove compartment hasn't really changed. It's still damped, lined with felt. It's big, uh, good size, which is definitely um, nice. Above you, this sunroof is standard. If you guys are looking for a pano sunroof, it's just not available. So make sure you guys just keep that in mind. But overall, the interior is probably the weakest aspect of the ILX. While they did update it with you know, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it does have Acura watches standard. It just feels old. It feels cramped in here, especially when you compare it to the new current generation Honda Civic. So when you hop into the back seat of the ILX, because it's based on the old Civic platform, you're gonna notice that the back seat is definitely not quite as roomy as the new Civic. It's legroom, Acura rates it at around 34 inches of legroom, which is actually two inches less than what you get in the current Civic sedan. And in terms of features, it's pretty light in here considering this is a luxury car, no rear seat vents. You only have one map pocket here, no heated rear seats, but you do have a soft touch material on the door panels and this red leather looks really nice, especially love the uh, black accents and then the suede that's in the middle here. You fold down this armrest here, you got cup, dual cup holders here, but just keep in mind the new Civic sedan offers more legroom and it also offers heated rear seats if you guys spring for the top of the line touring trim. So under the hood of the 2019 ILX, Acura actually didn't make any changes. We first saw this powertrain update back in 2016. It's the same motor that's in the base 2.4 TLX. So it's a 2.4 liter K-series, uh, naturally aspirated four-cylinder with direct injection. It actually makes the same power uh, as the 2018 model, 201 horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque. Acura says this motor makes more power than the base engines in the Mercedes A-Class and the Audi A3. Now being a naturally aspirated engine, Engine. Let's take a listen and hear how it sounds. And as you guys heard, uh, it has a relatively raspy sound. It reminds me a lot of a Civic Si sedan. Think of it almost like an Si with a dual clutch transmission. Now, ILXs are only still front wheel drive and they all come equipped with an eight speed dual clutch transmission. So compared to the Civic, uh, this car has a naturally aspirated engine and a dual clutch, which may you know, sway a lot of you to purchasing this over a Civic if you don't like a CVT or a small turbo. Now, being a bigger engine, the fuel economy is not all that great. It's rated at 24 in the city, 34 on the highway. Uh, Acura recommends to use premium gas. This car weighs about 150 pounds more than the Civic at just over 3,000 pounds. Let's get out on the road and see how it performs. So although this particular segment of entry-level compact sedans is definitely starting to shrink over the years with SUVs becoming so popular, it's still a very important segment, at least that's what Acura says, which is why they've you know, made some updates to the ILX for 2019. And honestly, I haven't driven one since 2016 um, when I had that A-Spec model. I got rid of mine literally like three or four years ago. Uh, and honestly, first getting behind the wheel of the 2019 model is basically deja vu. They haven't really changed this model that much in the last you know, six years since it came to market. This 2.4 liter eight speed combination came out in 2016. And it's basically the same powertrain that's in the TLX 2.4. It's a great powertrain with that eight speed dual clutch. If you hate the CVT that's in the new Civic, you're going to love the powertrain in this ILX. Now, granted, I will say that the fact that this is a naturally aspirated engine, everything else in this segment is turbocharged. Mercedes is coming out with their new A-Class, which has 188 horsepower. Audi's A4, or I'm sorry, A3 has either 184 or 228 horsepower. Um, and again, those have less horsepower at the base versions than this. 
this, but significantly more torque, like 40 more pound feet. And it's something that you're gonna notice in day-to-day -day driving. Now, how does the ILX still feel in terms of luxury car? You know, it, that's its mission essentially. And that's where the ILX also falls short. This is based on the previous generation Honda Civic platform, which is when honestly Honda was cheaping out. Um, and you definitely feel it. The ride quality is not as good as some of the European brands. And honestly, it doesn't feel like it rides any more premium than the current generation Civic. That actually, to me, rides a little bit nicer. Interior noise is also a concern. This definitely has more road noise, uh, more harshness than a Civic, for example, or something like uh, just a mainstream compact car like Mazda 3 comes to mind. It's a little bit quieter on the inside. You know, Volkswagen Jetta is quieter. Corolla feels like it rides and handles a little bit better. Now, the steering of the ILX also is definitely um, light. It's electric, obviously. It's a little numb and devoid of feel. Um, but overall, the car just feels, you know, like it's a generation behind. The dual clutch was a great transmission and honestly, it's still one of the good, one of the better dual clutches in the business. Not the quickest shifting at times, although the torque converter that they've added, um, or Acura, that Acura included for, the, for this transmission, does smooth out the shifts nicely. But I've definitely driven faster dual clutches now. Acura just needs to kind of beef it up. They need to update it, basically. It's still a great transmission, and if you absolutely hate CVTs, you're basically gonna drive this, and it's going to be really nice, you know, to drive. It feels like it gets to 60 and maybe, See there, I put my foot to the floor and it takes a second for it to downshift. Probably 6.8 seconds, 6.9 seconds. It doesn't feel as quick as my old manual 2.4 ILX, um, if I'm being honest, mainly because that car had just more instant throttle response because it was a stick shift. You do have paddles here, the transmission, it also will rev match. Well, let me go, there it goes to third. You know, the paddles work nicely. Honestly, this car feels relatively nice still, although the engine is buzzier than I would like it to be. Um, it's definitely, you know, the turbo engines in the competition are a smoother engine. They don't also rev quite as high. If you guys like revving out an engine, it's nice, but you do feel slight vibration back through the shifter, through the gas pedal, through the steering. So again, it doesn't really add to that luxury quotient. This car just feels like, you know, a previous generation Civic Si with a dual clutch. This is basically what the ILX is. If you don't like the current Civic Si, you're gonna really like this as a daily driver. Actually, I may even prefer driving this more than the current Civic Si uh, because I don't really like the characterless 1.5, although the six speed is nice in the Si. Um, I just find you know this to be a little bit more satisfying. Now, in terms of the handling, uh, ILX still has that fully independent suspension. You know, it's a, it's a nice handling car. It, this, you can feel the suspension's on the softer side. It leans a fair amount. The steering is just really dead, so that doesn't really inspire too much in terms of confidence. Putting it into sport mode here in the transmission, it could use like a full on sport mode from the IDS like you get in a TLX. It kind of just makes the transmission go into its, or get out of its top gears. Again there, it kind of rev matched automatically as I knew, or as it sensed that I was going on this off ramp. Again, this is a nice handling car. It's still surprisingly sharp. Just the steering needs a little bit more feedback. That's all it really needs. But the transmission there, it upshift. Uh, it or I'm sorry, it, it downshifted off automatically, which is definitely nice. A little bit of slippage there. A little bit of torque steer also. It short shifts actually, it short shifts at around 60, 6,600 RPM. This thing will keep pulling to 7,000, so that surprised me. But overall, yeah, this car still kind of feels like the Acura version of uh, an SI. Speaking of which, there's an SI right there. Um, that car to me is a nice car. Um, but I don't like the 1.5 in this. This has a little bit more character versus the 1.5 in the SI. It just sounds good. You know, feel that VTEC kick in when you put your foot down. It's definitely nice. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, kind of just driving the car normally. Let's put it into its drive. The ride, as you can see, is nice. It's, it's okay. It feels a little bit firm at times, but a little jittery. Road noise is higher. Visibility in here is good. Acura watch is standard, as I said. However, the um, adaptive cruise control is not full stop and go. So this will shut off around uh, 18 miles an hour. So again, the older technology. Visibility in here is also decent. The new hood bulges are strange when you look over the hood. Side mirrors are, are fairly large. Uh, decent view out of the back. 
The seats are also comfortable. This is still a pleasant car, especially for the price. Acura has priced it very nicely. Um, they've reduced the price by $2,000 for 2019. The problem is, is I keep comparing it to a Honda Civic when I should be comparing it to a Mercedes A-Class or an Audi A3. But I keep finding, I keep thinking of reasons why you should buy this over a Civic. Um, but then there are also times where I'm like, why don't you just get a Civic over this, especially if you don't really care. The Civic technically feels faster than this because it's got more low end torque versus the ILX. Now fuel economy also, because it's a high revving four cylinder, it doesn't really get the best gas mileage. It's rated at 24 in the city, 34 in the highway. Uh, because I enjoy revving the engine out and listening to it, I've been averaging about 20 miles to the gallon in mostly city. On the highway, it did get about 32 MPG. So not bad, but not the 40 MPG that you get in the Civic. Even the SI gets better gas mileage than this, so keep that in mind. It's one of the reasons why Honda went to a four-cylinder turbo. I would love to see Acura do, you know, a turbo with this, with the eight-speed dual clutch. Even like the two-liter turbo from the RDX with this eight-speed dual clutch would be a great combination. Acura could do so much with the ILX. They could offer it with super handling all-wheel drive, a limited slip diff. This could literally be an ILX Type S that takes the Type R's components and makes it into the Acura version with dual, a dual clutch transmission. So again, why Acura? Why don't you offer that? So. Hopefully they're working on a new generation that's based on the new generation, generation Civic, but until then, Acura has done a lot uh, with this current one, but it's definitely starting to feel a little bit long in the tooth. So with Acura giving the ILX yet another refresh for 2019, some of you may be quick to think they've just given up on their entry-level compact car. However, Acura says that they have still made this vehicle a priority and that an all-new generation is most likely still coming, although they haven't confirmed that it is. I would like to see Acura move this car to the new Civic platform because of how good it is. Now, with that being said, how does the current 2019 model stack up? Well, as you guys saw, it still has a relatively good position in the marketplace. It has that high revenue. 2.4 liter engine. It has that sweet dual clutch transmission. It has looks that honestly look a lot better than what you get on the current Civic sedan and hatchback. A lot of you have, have definitely given me that feedback. And the best part about the ILX is actually the price because they've reduced this car by about $2,000 for 2019. A base uh, ILX model starts at $25,900. That kind of compares favorably to a Civic EX. It only makes the ILX about two to $3,000 more expensive. Now, I highly recommend most of you to actually get the premium package for like another $2,000. It rolls in that uh, dual screen infotainment system, which I hate, but at least it gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It gives you the kind of features, the real leather, the heated seats that you expect in a vehicle like this. Now, this particular one here actually stickers for $32,455, which may sound like a pretty good amount of money, but Acura actually reduced the price by about $2,000, as I said, compared to a 2018 uh, ILX A-Spec. And if you're going to compare this car to a Mercedes-Benz A-Class or an Audi A3, the ILX tops out where those vehicles start out. I actually built a new A-Class sedan from Mercedes, and that car can easily almost kiss $50,000. So Acura has a strong value quotient on their hands, but unfortunately, I don't really know if that's going to get them so far. They only managed to move about 11,000 of these in all of 2018, and what I would like to see Acura do, move it on to a new, the new platform, give us a Type S model with the Type R's 2.0-liter turbo, super handling all-wheel drive and that 8-speed dual clutch, and charge about $42,000 for this thing. And I honestly think a lot of people would purchase one because it looks better, it has the Acura uh, reputation for reliability, it has the Acura luxury badge that people want, and I really just want to see Acura heavily invest some money into this ILX. Right now, the current refresh is a good effort, but it really is in dire need of a full review. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2019 Acura ILX A-Spec. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.